All right, welcome back to the Composing Made Simple podcast. This is episode 27. On this episode of Composing Made Simple, we're going to talk about taking a break from composing and going back to basics. And then we're going to talk a little controversy with the H-O-O-P-U-S, uh, East-West controversy. And then we're going to go in to discuss some of the hardware. Uh, I recently upgraded some of my gear, and we're just going to have a little discussion on hardware. So I hope you like this episode, so let's get on into it. Composing made simple. We we'll talk about something new every show. Composing made simple. Grab a coffee, have a seat, and let's go. Welcome back, guys. I know last episode I was not there. Um, it's good to be back. Sorry I couldn't make the last show. You are well missed. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I yes. appreciate both of you guys filling in the shoes for me. <laughs> and I know we took like a what a three month break anyway. Um, Life I think it was happened. only two. Yeah, it was two. Everybody's busy, just, you know, work, life, family, which is a good problem to have, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it could be worse. Because I think on this okay. show, I lost my job. Yeah, I, I was jobless when we, we started the podcast. Mm. So um, that's crazy how things have changed. In th- Jesus, three years, guys? We've been doing this for three years? Wow. Damn. Yeah. So anyway, we, we had a little discussion beforehand. Um, this episode might be a little jumbled because we have a lot to I have a lot to talk about and because since I've been gone and I know everybody's missed the long winded discussions that <laughs> I provide <laughs> my soapbox sometimes. Um, yeah, so I guess off the uh, off the top, uh, this is one of our topics. And I, I guess because we, we were talking about it right before we, we hit record and I was like, wait, 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 wait we got to record this. So um, what I've been doing, I, I feel like a fraud a little bit because like I literally have not been writing music for the last probably the last episode. And I think I even mentioned on the last episode that I wasn't really writing as much. Um, it, it doesn't mean I haven't been doing music. So what I wanted to talk about is taking a break. I know for some people, you can't do this. Like Curtis and Chris, this is their job. They do it. But for people like me, that's an amateur, you know, kind of hobbyist kind of thing. I can do this. And uh, I know I've talked about on the show, like my my oldest daughter was taking piano lessons. We have since stopped a little bit because of COVID and, you know, it's a little expensive right now. We'll hopefully get her back in. But she has a little piano and I it's away from my computer. It's detached. It's in a completely different room in my house. And it makes me think different. I don't think about computers and hit and record and metronomes and lining it up to the grid and all this crap. I just play. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of musician I am. I play. And I know about you guys. And um, I guess if you, if like you start it with a doll, it's like, that's your thing. Right. But for like me and probably Curtis is like, that's not how we started, you know, at least for me. And maybe Chris, you too, because you were a musician too. You know, you mm-hmm. played an instrument. And like the whole idea of sitting on a computer and hitting a button and playing, that hinders my creativity. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I'm sure you guys, after you've done this so many years, like it's just kind of natural now. Mm. Um, I don't know. But I was just like, but I haven't, it's not like I haven't been writing because I have my iPhone and that, that's the greatest invention that's ever happened, right? Voice memos, <laughs> actually yep. getting rid of the music memos, which is what? Like, that's the greatest thing, man. So they're combining it into voice memos. Did you guys see that? I'll be honest. Yeah, I've dude. never used it. <laughs> I've really? never used music memos. Oh, yeah, I've always used voice memos. It memos. is a godsend, man. Like, if you're, <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you're writing in your doll, you really don't need it. But like I'm saying, for me, I'm telling you, the, the best thing that's ever happened to me is just sitting at an instrument away from a computer. Just right. getting away from it, man. And just sitting down. And sometimes I just put my phone on and I hit the record button. And I just play. And something's going to come out, you know, that's where your best ideas come out for, at least for me. I don't, I mean, I I just can't sit there and and look at the doll, you know, the blank canvas syndrome, you know, Mm -hmm. the flashing cursor and just like do it. And then hearing a click going like, okay, it's like, it's not inspiring for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anyway, going off on a tangent here. So basically what I've been doing is I've been going back to basics, you know, I'm learning to play the piano, not good. (laughs) <laughs> it's not my goal. That's not my goal. I'm not a pianist. I'm just learning enough to be dangerous, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Because what we do, you piano skills are kind of necessary. Wouldn't you guys agree? Like it yeah. makes the job a lot Deep easier. Skills for in general. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, because as a guitar player, you know, like, yeah, you could write in the DAW and all that, but like sometimes you need to flesh out ideas and, and knowing how to play the piano <laughs> makes it a lot simpler, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I've been doing. And I've been going through all my scales, learning all the chords on the piano. I mean, obviously, I know how to create chords on the piano. I, I know basic music theory. You know, I took music theory in college. But it's nice because I've been learning how melody works. And I kind of, in my brain, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of look at melody writing as like chord writing. It's the same crap. I mean, it really is when you break it down. You know, some notes go better than others, right? Just mm -hmm. like some chords go, like one, four, five. Well, if you did one, four, five of the melody in the scale, it's going to work. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. it sounds stupid and simple. And music is simple for the most part. It's creating ideas is what's hard for me. But mm -hmm. the, the, the concept of music and chords and progressions, it's very simple. But to do something with it, that's where it gets to be a problem. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't talk about rhythm either. That's music. Rhythm is music, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. So, yeah. So anyway, off my little tangent, I just wanted to say that because like sometimes I feel like a fraud coming on this podcast because like, but but that's what our podcast is. It's like we have, we do the spectrum. We do amateur, you know, we do amateur recreational people, hobbyists, me, and then we have Chris and Curtis, you know, professionals that do it for a living. So I think we cover a wide spectrum. You know, and I think our podcast reaches a lot of people. And I've, you know, I see people come in Discord all the time saying, God, I love the podcast, you know, and it's really great to hear that, you know, because mm -hmm. we just kind of go, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's like we just kind of do this thing because we like talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't really think we're making an impact, but I, I guess we really do. Um, so anyway, that's what my life's been up to. And I know you missed my voice last episode. So I thought I would, <laughs> I would hog up all the air in, in the room at the beginning. <laughs> It's only well, been seven minutes and 50 yeah. some seconds. It's fine. It's fine. That, that's, that's light. It's pretty me. good. Yeah, that's light. <laughs> yeah. But no, I miss talking to you guys. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, obviously since, you know, music's not my career, it's not a bad thing. I mean, who's to say someday I might not do it part time? Who knows? Um, just right now in my life, it's just, it's just not, you know, the thing, but I still love it. I mean, yeah. it's never going to leave me. Music never leaves you. That urge, you know, that, that, that creation thing. Well, um, Todd, I have to say, um, no, no matter what, no matter how, how, like, I guess, far away you've been from music or, you know, however long you've taken not writing anything, um, yeah. I, I, I think it's like totally normal to, to feel like, whoa, if I'm, if I'm coming back here, like, you know, who am I to, to say this or this or this, but I feel like mo most of our audience is more in like your position right yeah uh, rather than in you know curtis or mine for example because i guess most most people are working a side job or something else to pay the bills on a regular basis so everything you say is is insanely valuable so i don't think you should ever feel like an imposter or a fraud or whatever i know and you're probably exaggerating too but you know what i mean like yeah whatever you're saying it is valuable so i i hope you don't actually feel <laughs> that way no. No, you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, we have to know yeah. our audience and that was the reason we started the podcast you know yeah, it was like yeah. we had three different perspectives yes. you know curtis is along in the journey a little bit more than we are and chris mm -hmm. you were just starting at the yeah, time but it's been exactly. three years you're you're not the you're not the you know the youngin anymore the rookie um <laughs> you know you're you're doing this and, and and that's why we did the podcast because we had three different um perspectives and i think they're really great perspectives like you said most people fall in my category, you know, believe it or not. A lot, a lot of people make money from from doing music. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's just the, the sad reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I totally agree with that, man. And yeah, I I just say, you know, I mean, who who the hell am I to come on and, you know, you know, but everybody has an opinion. And sometimes we don't really understand or get who we affect. And we yeah. were talking before the podcast about live streaming and Curtis is live streaming again on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And he and, I'll let Curtis speak to, to how he feels about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hate every second. Yes. But I, I was telling okay. him, like, he made a great point about revisions. You know, most people only see the final product of what you do. And he was talking about the trailer he did for Halo uh, Infinite and how he did, like, 30-some revisions. But nobody sees or hears that. And I think 
for me as a creative, and I think for other people out there, that is valuable information because we all just think you sit down to write a tune and it just happens. Magic happens. It does happen sometimes, but 90, what, what would you say? 98, 99.5% of the time, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like you have to beat your head up against the wall to get something. And welcome to being a composer. Welcome to being a creative. And and that was one thing we strive about on this podcast too, is we wanted to talk about that side of it as well, because it doesn't get talked about a lot. And like I said, I'm not gonna put words in my mouth, but Curtis, you know, we're and Curtis doesn't like live stream, but I think it's very valuable for him to do it because we're not looking at it from at least me. I don't look at it as like, oh, I want to see what he comes up with. I want to see how he comes up with it. Because and you know, if it's John Williams, if it's freaking Hans Zimmer or Curtis or Todd Cadwards or Chris, we all do the same damn thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we really do. Like there, there's no magic. They're sitting at the piano. They're, 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 they're doing it just like you, man. Sitting there beating it away for hours until something comes out. Sometimes, like we said, magic happens. Lightning strikes, man. And a piece comes out of you and you didn't have to think about it. We love those times. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. But it doesn't happen all the time. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that doesn't get talked about. And like I said, I, I, I'm a creative. I, I know I'm a creative. I'm a weird person. I don't fit with most of society. Now, I'm... I use word uh, weird as you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't mean it literally sure. weird. Sure. Yeah. It's just like you know there's something different about you. I've always known that since I was a kid. Like there's just I just don't jive with the most people because mm-hmm. there's just something about me that I think differently. And um, so it's good for and I didn't really realize what it meant to be a creative until I read that book by Austin Kleen. Um, I forgot the I forgot it. We've talked about it. I've talked about it before. And like that really opened my eyes of what it means to be a creative. And so anyway, okay, we just yeah. added another seven minutes. Um. Yeah. Well, just to, just to quickly play devil's advocate here. I mean, like, yeah. it, you, and you you talked about you know how um, most of the time we're we're you know forcing ourselves to write something and you know it's not going to turn out great. Um, I actually lie on the camp on the other side. Like, I feel like if 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 I um, deliberately tell myself I have to write something, then mm-hmm. it's it's not going to be as good as if I waited for inspiration to strike, right? And right. people may heavily disagree with that. Totally fine. I mean, that's that's just a different approach. But um, I, I think, especially if you are working in music and you have to write for a living, then those moments that Todd mentioned are especially prevalent. However, if you're writing for pleasure and you feel like if you write just because you have to, then the 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 inspiration and the love for writing might dwindle. And that's kind of how I've experienced it before. So for me personally, like I'm working on an album right now, most of it is finished. All of those moments have come just either because like uh, an idea woke me up from a dream or like I thought of something in the shower and I had to write it down. Every single song that's in there is because it was inspired by something and not because I forced myself to write something. And so as a result, I'm proud of every single piece of the of that of the record so far yeah um so i i think that there's there's something to be said for both sides if you're writing for yourself if you're writing for pleasure uh then you know it's something that you should you should treasure and you shouldn't force but if it's if you're on deadlines and things like that then of course there are moments where you actually have to do that but just know that you're not locked into you know one or the other and you might be in the middle as well right so yeah. you might be a bit of both well you, you, you key word there deadline when you right. get under pressure, right. exactly. you write. Um, it's just a thing. And it, I'm not saying like you can't write. We can all write something. Is it good? I don't know. It's subjective. But <laughs> yeah. For, exactly. To please your inner ego, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, do you like it? Um, that's a different thing than just saying, can you just throw a piece out there? And there's pieces out there we've all done that we hate, but other people love. Like the one you think everybody's going to love, they hate. And the one that mm-hmm. you hate, everybody loves. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like I said, it's subjective. Like, and I think most composers or writers always tell you, like, once the piece is finished and you put it out in the open, it's not yours anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, it's for other people to judge, and it's out of your hands. So, Curtis, you've been really quiet, and I don't want to. I, I want to hear from what you. I've. I've been quiet. <laughs> no. He's been talking the whole time. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I've been writing while you guys have been talking. No. Um. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm more of the discipline side of things where I just think I mean I do agree so 
listening to Chris talk about inspiration and waiting for inspiration made me think of that line from that movie Stranger Than Fiction where the writer finally breaks her writer's block and the person asks her, how did you do it? What did you do? And she said, like all things worth writing, it came to me suddenly and without me. Right. Um, because <laughs> uh, I do think people get in that weird like space where they think they can manufacture it, you know, right. whatever it is. Um, and I don't think that's nece- – I agree that that's not really something you can necessarily force, and it's futile to try. But I also find, for me, that I don't know how many times – you know, if I sit down and write every day, then I know that if I had a good moment that day, I probably found it, right? Like, because yeah. it came to me while I was sitting down and putting the work – the time in to do it. And if I don't write that day, I don't know how many ideas I didn't get to, you know – catch if you will um so i'm a big like do it as much as you can and and i'm a huge hypocrite in that like i didn't write anything yesterday like at all like like chris i've been working on some tracks that i'd like to put together into an album at some point and so yesterday i spent the i was like i was like oh i don't want to do it so i spent the entire day like (laughs) you know doing stupid production crap on all that which um needs to be done but probably not like you know like i should have also like done something right um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was basically procrastinating. Um, so I, I find for, and that's just for me. Like, I don't tell other people that if you don't do it this way, that um, that it's bad. I do think that like a little bit of writing every day is good. Um, I understand yeah. some days you'll, you'll sit down and nothing will happen and that's fine. And I think that one of the things about working every day and trying to write every day is that you learn to be very more kind to yourself. Like, Oh, nothing came out today. Fine. Whatever. You know, when you've had that experience over and over and over again of, of not finding inspiration, it makes it feel a little better, I guess, because you've sort of, I guess you've sort of practiced that. Uh, you've practiced what it's like to be a little bit frustrated. And so it's less frustrating next time. Oh, I, you know, I worked on it. Nothing came out. That's fine. You know, whereas I find that when I'm, have long stretches where I am not as disciplined, it feels really bad when I sit down and try to do something and nothing happens, right? It's like really extra frustrating. Yeah. Um, That's where I'm at so right I now. Think, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, I, and I guess I would say that by having that experience over and over and over again, you just get used to dealing with it emotionally. Cause there is like this certain amount of frustration where you're just like so mad that <laughs> you, um, that you didn't, um, that you didn't get anything done today, but you know, that happens all the time. I, I had a stream the other day where I just literally spent two hours doing nothing. I was just like, tried something out, didn't work. Okay. Start over, try something out, didn't work. Okay. Start over. And I spent like two and a half hours doing that. And one of the things, it was really kind of nice to see people in the chat being like, this makes me feel more like a, you know, less like a failure. And I'm like, yeah, because this is what everybody goes through. Yeah. Um, streaming it was excruciating but <laughs> <laughs> i've been there but yeah it's just i don't know that's it's i i will continue streaming by the way even though i find it a little painful it's one of those things where i feel like once you start doing it more and more and more and more it's less and less pain because part of your routine right yeah. yeah yeah exactly it's the same idea so i just need to like get off my stop whining about it and do it uh, <laughs> i enjoy them dude like i said i learn stuff man like i learn what you do how you do it and i i'll use some of their techniques and make it my own um, and like I said, it's, it's, it's pulling the veil from the process and we're yeah. all the I same. Think that there needs to be a lot of demystification of this because yeah. like you said, people get this thing at the end and it's like their favorite thing and it like emotionally impacts them and it sort of almost has this like mystical quality about it. Um, yeah. and you feel like this person must like have descended from some <laughs> other ethereal plane, right. To bring you this caliber. Thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And that's not true. Um, and, and I think that by demystifying it, hopefully we can welcome more people into the, into the, into the process because, you know, there's nothing special about me or right. any, like, I, it's just, I, I happen to get lucky one day, basically. Um, so, I find that to be one of my missions, I guess. One of my things that I like try to try to do um, is to try to sort of demystify that process. Um, and I think it's really great and it's and it's fun. Um, and I think that um, 
you know, like there's a lot of people that do that. Like I think uh, John Powell does that. If you ever see interviews with him, he talks about how, you know, he'll often bang his head against a wall. Um, certainly, I think Junkie XL does a great job. Tom Hulkenberg does a great job of, of demystifying everything and just showing you what it's like and what he does and his incredibly messy, wonderful, beautiful, just just <laughs> piles of stuff he has all over his studio. It's <clears throat> just so nice, right? Because you think of him. Yeah. Again, like, oh, it must be like that Hans Zimmer room, you know, that you always see this, like, <laughs> beautiful thing. But it's probably – most of it is not. Most of it is yeah. just, you know, you know, some room where they've got a bunch of cheap monitors set up and they're just trying to, do, you know, get it done in time, you know, sort of sort of deal. So, yeah. um, by the way, he's back on YouTube again. He's – he's uh, that, Tom yeah. Book has got a new studio time that everyone should go watch. It's wonderful. Nice. I've seen them pop up. I just – I haven't watched them yet. Like I said, I just, like – I just took a break, man. Like I needed it because to recharge the batteries, man. And like to come at it as a different perspective, I'm trapped. And Chris, I, I know you're working more of a back to your roots, right? On this record that you're doing. Correct. Yeah. 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 It's and, more of like a, you know, Disney type of thing, but there's also some pop and stuff. I'm just exploring a little bit, but yeah, the past couple months have been probably the most fruitful of my quote unquote career so far. Cool. And that that's where I'm falling victim. Like, you know, there'll be no stranger here. I am a rock guitar player. End of story. That's who I am. Like, I'm not trying to be, you know, I don't know. You know, like Curtis could write music on paper. I can't even read it. Like I could do basic reading, you know, treble clef. I could read it. You know, I'm getting a little bit better. But I play by my ears, man. That's how I've always done it. Mm -hmm. And that's not a diss. It's like, oh, I'm not legit. Um, I just, you know, like I said, I, ca I come from music differently. Like, you know, I came to it when I was a teenager. I played guitar just for fun. And then I've somehow just got a passion for it. You know, I think it was I, I think my passion is not as much as it was then, um, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, but that's the thing about life, man. Like if you're not evolving and changing, there's something wrong with you. You're not going to be the same person as you was 20 years ago. Um, you know, the older I get, I'm, I'm going to be 40 this year. <laughs> wow. And just to think about that, that's crazy, you yes. know, 40. And, and I've just kind of come to the acceptance, you know, it's like music is probably not going to happen to me for a career and I'm okay with that. But that doesn't mean I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing, you know, and I think a lot of people get hung up on that. Well, if I'm not doing music professionally, making money, then I'm not real. I'm not legit. Uh -huh. It's not true because think about how many people out there that look at Tom, look at Junkie XL. He's like, what, probably in his 50s? And like he just like kind of became a composer in the last 10 years. He's, mm -hmm. It's not like he hasn't been doing music. He was doing dance music, right? He was a DJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look how many composers. John Williams. He didn't get famous till he was like 40, <laughs> like 45. Star Wars. He was like 45 or something like that when he did Star Wars. So think about that. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know the cool thing about arts is that generally the older you get, the the better your art yeah. gets, yeah, whatever right. that is. If it's visual art, musical art, writing, whatever, because you need the like life experience to sort of inform it. Not that young people can't write good music. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that it's one of those cool careers where the older you get, it sort of enriches and and helps you rather than it's not right. like. You know, I always hear these things about like mathematics, where if you don't do your great work, you know, <laughs> your great work in your 20s, you're done, right? Right. Um, that's, I think it's the opposite in the, in the arts generally, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to worry about getting old. Yeah. Well, getting old has well, got a lot of upside. Day, <laughs> you know, as long as you're able to think, you know, I mean, obviously now with computers and that, I mean, obviously, it, you know, if it was the back in the day, you know, writing on paper, as long as you can write on paper, you can write music. I mean, I know, Curtis, you can write write on paper. And Chris, you can too, right? Um, uh, yeah, I've notated before. Yeah. yeah. So like me, I can't. So like if I was physically unable to do it, I couldn't probably do it. But I will say that's not true because Jason Becker, he's a guitar player. He has Lou Gehrig's disease. He's had it since he was 20 years old. The guy's in his like 40s now or reaching his 50s. He's been alive for like 30 years with ALS, still writing music. He just put mm. out an album. Oh God, it's so good. I sent a track to Curtis. Yeah, that, remember? that was good. It was lovely. Dude, yeah. yeah. That guy, is, he has Lou Gehrig's and he has an assistant, but he does everything with his eyes. He has all these movements that he does and that's how he writes music. Beautiful. It's insane. The guy's, he, anyway, Jason Becker, look him up. Anyway, uh, like that's, that's like, he's a guitar player, but he, like, he's so much more. 
And like Steve Vai is another one. Like, yeah, he looks like a rock guitar player, but like he's, you know, trained to write music and he does this orchestral. That's like what I've always wanted to do. And I just don't have the the schooling or the knowledge of it. But anyway, I don't let that stop me. Anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> all good stuff. I, I think sometimes it's good to circle back around these topics and, mm-hmm. you know, be reminded of these things, at least for me. And yeah, with age two, Curtis, like you're saying, you just don't care anymore. It's like, whatever, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like in your twenties and thirties, you feel like you have to do this standard or this thing, or you have to be like this or, and when, once you start getting older, it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't care. I just do what I, I do. Think, I think also, because when you're older, you've already found your quote unquote calling, like what you, you're meant yeah. to do or like the, the stability, you've probably found that already at that point. I think for me currently, I, I'm kind of in that transition period where like, I'm yeah, I'm teaching full time. Uh, but it was only in the past couple of months where I kind of realized like, yeah, songwriting is actually what I loved in the first place. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm going to actually pursue that full time at this moment and because I have the teaching to support me. But for you guys, it's, it's wonderful. Cause um, I mean, you're kind of on the uh, different, different ends of the spectrum, but um, you both have that, that stability and you, you know, in the back of your mind, like what you're doing in your day to day job is, is paying the bills and that's the most important. So it frees you up to do what you enjoy the most when you have the time. Right. Yeah. Time. There you go. If you have kids like me and Curtis finding time, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and Curtis has, you know, a younger child, so it's even two more. younger children. Woo! Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. Amazing. Time sucks. I agree. That's all yeah. that's all I see them as. Nothing else. Yes. No. no, I love it. If you're a parent, you understand. We don't have to talk about it. But yes. um <laughs> But I, I also Chris to your point, like but it's not it's there's nothing wrong with refine, redefining yourself as you're older mm-hmm. too. You know, True. you're going to change. Like I said, if you don't evolve, if you're the same person you were five, ten years ago, that's a problem. You, you, we should always be evolving, you know, always striving to get better, striving to learn new things, grow. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I think music is the best place for that. I mean, think about it. Think about tracks you guys did five years ago compared to what you're doing today is hopefully it's different mm-hmm. i mean there, there, there's you in it obviously you're never going to get rid of you i've noticed that myself and like guitar players is the, the perfect thing because everybody talks about gear you know gas syndrome oh if i just had this guitar i can and then like i just saw a video uh, ingve momstein he was playing a, a uh, jimmy page um uh telecaster that jimmy page used to play in this like late 60s 70 early 70s it still sounded like ingve momstein <laughs> like it didn't matter like what it was like you are you and you're going to sound like you. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- that goes with libraries and gear, whatever. It's like, doesn't matter what library you have. It's going to sound like you because it's your vocabulary. It's your experiences. It's your emotions, all that stuff. And that's why I don't buy libraries anymore. I have Spitfire and that's it. And I've noticed Curtis, you're jumping on the Spitfire train more and more each day. It's creeping. I see it. Your, your template's full of Spitfire. My template's <laughs> full of everything. <laughs> yeah, but I see you. I see you. <laughs> oh, Curtis, always the diplomat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it is, though. Like, I'm actually I buying a lot does. of different lines. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. But, but go, God, back, like, go back when we first started. There, okay. We first started the podcast. There wasn't that much I Spitfire. Spitfire stuff. I think it's great. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like, but we evolved. You yeah. know, because Curtis was strictly East West for the most part, you know, like there's nothing wrong with it. Well, and I think that goes to my approach where I sort of like get whatever the best quote unquote thing people say from a developer is buy that. And then I sort of stick to that developer and kind of expand mm-hmm. uh, all this. And I, because I, it's easier for me to learn a developer that way. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Spitfire had their time. Um, uh, yeah. No, it's, it's fine. But like no, no, it goes back to our learning, learning your libraries. You know yeah. those libraries in and out, dude. You can, you know what you can and can't do with those. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not you're not um, held up by them. Like you know right. what I mean? They're not going to hinder your writing process. Like, like you get a new library, you're like, oh, I don't know what I can do, and you're experimenting more, so that you're kind of wasting time. You know, where you should be writing, but you're learning. But it's all good. I'm just just giving you, you know. Yeah. Just poke fun at you. <laughs> no, I know. Curtis is very, like, he's got everything. Trust me. 
in like um output dude if i didn't know curtis i wouldn't know about output and i love output stuff i love everything i have everything that they make except so. one of their plugins recently because i just haven't gotten around to buying it but yeah i love all their stuff their stuff is really good for when you want the the electronics but yeah. especially anyway i went way off topic again it's, no worries it's our that's podcast. that's, a, that's uh, we welcome do. to podcasting that's yeah that's what, what podcasting we do people is. love hearing this stuff it's rabbit holing yes uh, <laughs> you go down those all the time but i was i was but this is a good transition i mean really since we suddenly went from into yeah. library land so yes. yeah well i just wanted to say one thing last thing what i meant to say with chris is like he's going down a different approach with his music on this album and i was trying to say is like that's where i'm stuck you know and I'm trying to find myself like, how can I incorporate the guitar and my influences with this thing? And I guess now is a better time than ever because there's a lot of composers that are just like me. You know, Tyler Bates, he's a guitar player. You know, he played for Marilyn Manson, for Christ's sakes, while he was like he was composing music. And um, so I don't think it matters, you know, what you do. It's just your output, you know, like that's what you get judged on. It's not how you get there. Oh, yeah, 100 percent, especially in media. Yeah, yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares what school you went to. Nobody cares. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what you find for all you younger people out there. Um, what I found, I'm, like I said, I'm almost 40. I, I work a career. You know, every week when you're younger, you get hung up on the school you go to, what college. and It's like, dude, once you get in the real world, it don't matter. I mean, it's great if you have a degree. You know, they know, oh, hey, yeah, OK, cool. What can you do? <laughs> you know, at mm-hmm. the end of the day, can you do the job and can you do it quickly and fast and cheap? That's it. Um, all right, so let's move on to our next one. So, Curtis, I think you were going to – this is – is Yeah, I wanted to – like, I mean, I thought – so I was kind of, like, going over our topics. And, like, we've sort of done a lot of generalized topics recently just because we're kind of getting back into the saddle, I guess, um, as far as podcasting. So we haven't really been talking about actual samples and music tools that we usually talk about. Um, so mm-hmm. I thought I would try to find a topic that would work um in terms of actually addressing something that's actually happening in sample land and for this i decided to kind of take a take a dip into the hollywood orchestra opus edition controversy which is spawn day <laughs> let's see what are we at on vi control we are at a hundred and i believe 45 page uh Jeez. pages of complaints 146 yeah has it been um, fire record yet or uh it has not beat the bbc threat i don't think um <laughs> Probably never will, to be honest. But <laughs> I don't will anything, will anything. Um, so uh, East West is taking all of their Hollywood samples plus some new content, and they've rewritten their engine for a new. So they're not going. This is not going to use play. It's going to use, I guess, the Opus engine is what they're calling it. Oh. Um, and it supposedly has some like orchestration tools built into it. I'm not sure what that means, and no one does. <laughs> but yeah, it was supposed to come out in January, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, nearly April, and no no word on if it's coming out yet. Um, and I guess I thought this was an interesting way to kind of talk about like you know in software development in sample land, like it's really important that you not stake a lot and risk a lot on something that isn't out and like looked at um and really really people have dove dove into it and played with it and made made work with it like like if you're i wanted to take this opportunity to sort of like talk to new composers and be like you know these things are very complicated software it takes a very long time to put them out and you really can't bank on the product until the product is out and you know it's good um because i'm seeing a lot of people that maybe pre-ordered a little too early if they were doing it i think they said they were pre-ordering they had pre-orders i think they're refunding the pre-orders if you want now but like this was just such a great example of like just like creativity as a whole making the tools for creativity sometimes it just takes a long time and you never know when these things are going to be out i mean i at this point i'm expecting this library to be out at the same time the last game of thrones book is finished um <laughs> like it just it takes a long time and you can't yell at them and make them go faster right it's right. like you don't the alternative is for them to put it out now and it's kind of garbage right like Cyberpunk um, or, 2077 anybody <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's a great there's a great example of something that maybe was pushed out a little too early. Um, and while there's some great 
you know, examples of it, you just can feel that it is like, could have been way better. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. um, that probably is what, what would have happened with this. So I, I guess I just wanted to kind of use this as a topic we could sort of talk about between us about like, don't bet your career on stuff that is unreleased, whatever that is. Like, yeah. you know, if tomorrow Steinberg is like, we're going to, we're dropping Cubase. We're coming out with our new DAW. It's going to be called, you know, Zimmer DAW <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. Like you just don't, it doesn't matter until it's out. Like don't bank on it. Don't, you know, if, if it's hard for you to spend money, don't pre-order these things necessarily. If you're like me and you could pre-order them. Great. Like I've, I'm sure I've already, I actually, I have, this is in Composer Cloud. So, you know, I'm going to get it when I get it. I mean, I will say I bought a a, a server for this. <laughs> nice. oh, wow. And uh, this was a mistake. <laughs> because I got this great high-powered <laughs> server that has no samples on it almost. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but you can always repurpose it, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. What I've done is I've moved all my, I'm in the process of getting all my East-West stuff onto that server so that I don't have to use this old PC that I've been, that I've been running all my stuff off of. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about was like, you know, you know, wait yeah. until things come out and like understand that they're good. Cause like, and understand why they're good. And if that's good for you as a composer, right. you know, I don't know if you could maybe talk about, like, I know that like, uh, CS wins, right. Uh, mm. Cinematic Studio wins was like, took forever to come out, but now it's awesome. Right. Like, and right. everyone loved it. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. and so like, that seems like that's, that, that's really working for people. So, you know, what do you guys think? What, what is your, what is your, what is your approach? Like when we have these like big controversies of like, Oh, they didn't put it out on the release date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, I think I, well, first of all, I, uh, I think I just find myself shying away from those things altogether. And because like I started with uh, some good libraries already that were already out. Um, I, I was kind of like already using cine samples and OT stuff. And anytime something like this happens, I'm just like, okay. I mean, it's usually with Spitfire. It's usually with, uh, well, I mean now with East West, but uh, the, the companies that I use typically don't hint at stuff and then, you know, under promise or what is it over promise. Uh, yeah. and you know, so, so they usually have a pretty over good promise record. and under the, that's right. Yeah. 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 They, they usually have a pretty good track record with releases and, um, staying on their dates. I'm sure there's exceptions, but yeah, with, uh, with CSW though, it was interesting. Like they have the opposite approach to what East West did. They didn't hype up the product at all. They didn't even mention it. They like, they, they made people speculate about them, right. Based on the quality yeah. of their previous libraries. And so when it came out, all of a sudden there was no, um, no announcement. It literally just came out on YouTube, the walkthrough video and the technical video. Uh, they just showed up and then people started talking about it. And then afterwards, the developer put out the, you know, commercial release page or whatever it was. And um, and then, yeah, p- people people buy it because they, they already know to trust the quality. And some have argued that it's maybe not as solid as the strings or the brass, but, you know, you it, it at least meets a certain level of quality. And I, I definitely enjoy it. So, I, I yeah, yeah. I'm noticing that that trend amongst libraries where they always put out the strings and the brass, and then when the winds come out, everyone's like, "Oh, this isn't as good." I, I'm starting <laughs> to wonder if maybe winds are hard to sample, guys. They are. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe, yes, yeah. Maybe don't put are. all your eggs in that basket so much. Right. You know. Well, it's it's with any profession you're in when you release products. I mean, video games is the worst. I, I mentioned Cyberpunk 2077. I played it. Haven't beat it yet because I stopped playing it. I mean, but I've gotten, I've played it for 70 hours, like literally. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. The 70 hours that I played. Is there bugs? Yes. I like, I'm like Chris, I don't get involved with this stuff because I know it takes time to do this stuff and just harping on the developers over and over. And then they, and then you're going to be pissed. Like, because last year Cyberpunk got delayed like three times or twice. If they would have just let it bake for another six months and released it today, the game would have been better, you know, and I understand from a business perspective. I mean, this is what I'm saying. There's a lot more going on than just, oh, we needed library. Like there's business decisions. There's people's careers and you know what I'm saying? Like this is this goes way deeper than what people really realize. You know, if you don't work in corporate America, you don't understand, (laughs) you know, Um, you know, you you, got to make money, you know, for for the company or you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, you don't have a company. So, um, and sometimes when they just have to release stuff, and but when they don't release stuff, I think the approach is 
don't say anything until you're about a month away from release or damn near ready to release. Then hype it, then release it, and be done. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what they did, though. And what happened yeah. was they were like, you know, there's it's software, so sometimes things mm-hmm. happen. And it's oh, like, yeah. well, now we, you know, now there's this unforeseen thing that happens. Because well, they were going to demo it at NAM. Yeah. And then they, like, realized, well, we can't do this. Yeah. Um, but and COVID I, happened, though. I mean, we got to understand, well, the last year. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Just screwed everybody. Dude, think about, like, I'm just saying video games just because, you know, everybody can relate to video games. And that's where, like, if you've ever been on a video game forum, <laughs> whoa. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, heated debates and people arguing. It's like, I, I can only take so much. And, you know, it's like, how many games got pushed back that were supposed to be out already? Because of COVID, you know, and I mean, look at you can't even get a freaking video card. I got a 3090, by the way, Founders Edition, <laughs> and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> and um, and I paid regular street price for it. I didn't have to pay with Bitcoin. And um, anyway, sorry. Um, I'm just saying it's like. <laughs> hey, I happen. would I would be telling everybody, I would have a sign on the front of my house if I had a 3090. I do. I have a 3090 like Founders line. Edition Own that I paid 3090. Yeah. from Best Buy. Suckers. Yes, MRSRP. I didn't have to pay six thousand dollars for it so anyway um yeah these things happen and i think as a community we need to be better it's not the business fault it's the community because okay they didn't bring it out okay move on with your life when it's ready it will be out i mean that's the kind of life i try to live i don't try i understand if they say oh it's going to be out tomorrow and then that day like oh sorry we're pushing it back yeah you get you get a little um, I mean, I understand being frustrated. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Um, but I mean, as long as the company's open and honest, that's. I don't know if East West was was yeah. as as communicatively good there as they go. could have been because they never are. But I right. mean, come on, you. But it's they have East to protect West. the business. Are you surprised? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on a little thing. Here. Um, this is 2021, people. Businesses need to get their act together. You need to be. You know what I mean? You have to be transparent. We know. Like, people will find out. Like, we live in 2021, okay? People will find out information, and then it's going to hurt the company even worse if you're not brutally honest. Or you try to market, you know what I mean, that marketing BS that they do, and they try to, oh, well, this and that. Just come out and say it. And you'll save yourself so much grief man like, well I don't, I don't know about that todd i mean yeah. i'm gonna push back on that a little bit okay. i mean t- nick phoenix went into the vi control thread and basically did that and got you know well, <laughs> destroyed control. for it I don't but, I mean, I, but that's kind of a, a, a simulacrum of a larger like response to these sorts of things right. like when you do come out and say that people are like well obviously you're incompetent well, you know obviously so... just shut your pie hole and just go back to writing music you douchebag i mean i know i'm just saying like i don't i don't know I mean, it's I think that's a difficult balance to strike sometimes let's, but i mean let's... even even like the great companies like i mean chris mentioned um ot like sign is still not really great i'm sorry mm-hmm. like it crashes yeah. daily uh for me it, <laughs> it will crash my whole project if you know you don't baby it perfectly but you know what I, I think we just need to be like, it's hard to make a sampler. It's it really hard. And, you know, it'll get there. It'll be fine. And and you have to ask yourself, like, what are the upsides, right? Like, why do I keep using Sign, for instance, right? Like, I keep using Sign because Sign has a lot of upsides, right? Like, their mic management is awesome. Their ability to, like, just purchase one mic of one instrument, right? Yeah, like, it's cool. awesome. Like, that's so cool, right? Like, and yeah, sometimes it crashes. Cool. So you know what I do? I hit Command S more often, or like right before I'm about to load a JXL, <laughs> it's JXL brass instrument. I save the project just in case, you know. And that's fine, you know. And and it, you just have to have a more balanced, I think, approach to the all these sorts of to, to the Hollywood series to the. Even, I mean, remember BBC? Like to this day, people still claim like BBC has had no updates, even though it's had like 30 or whatever, 20. <laughs> I think like. Right. It's at 20 updates, you know. Oh, they just abandoned it and moved on. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, it might be not be what you want in a sample library, and that's okay. You know, like, that's fine. Yeah. That's There's what it comes down to. That. That people want, they don't want to work. They want the library to do it all for them. And, dude, go back 10 years. Like, the, where libraries are today, like, you don't even need to do reverbs anymore. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine what you had to do uh, back in the day with templates, man. You had to build your own reverb in your own room to get these things to work. Because it's like, it was like VSL. Yeah. Like, literally, that's what libraries were like. You give VSL to somebody today, oh my God, can you imagine the VI thread? I, I was going to do a little experiment. It was like, go on all these VI threads that blow up and look at the users. I bet you you'll find all those same people on all these types of threads. Some people just like to do this stuff. And I'm not one of them. I don't participate because it's wasted time. Take that time and put it to something else, man. Put it to some good use. And it's just it's just the nature of this. It, you get it in video games. You get it in computer, Apple versus Mac. Look at your computer. How many times does your computer crash? Or this? Welcome to the world. I mean, this is it happens, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, writing software is hard. It's not easy. And especially think about all the different systems that everybody's running these things on. You know what I'm saying? Like, how sure. are they supposed to know? Because you know, like. I build a PC. Well, I build my PC with these components, but the next guy has these components. That's why, like, for the Mac, for the most time, and I'm not trying to be a Mac fanboy, but most of the times it just works because every Mac is the same. <laughs> like, yeah. every iMac, you know what's running in that iMac, so a developer can write to that system. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's better. I'm just saying most right. of the times I find myself when I'm on a Mac, it just works, <laughs> you know? Especially like Apple apps, I hardly ever have. I mean, Logic crashes, Final Cut crash. I mean, you know, we get these things. It's just the nature of the beast. But I, I hear you, Curtis. I get it. I don't go to VI control forum. It's a cesspool of nonsense. <laughs> I don't know if it's a cesspool. For me, it yes, is. It's sometimes I, frustrating. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's supposed to be there to help people. Like that's the intent of it. And it just becomes into a... Like, even if you post something for help, then you're going to get that that person that just kind of like, wait, really? You know, and I'm like, OK, dude, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, do you have like, we're can to we make can, can, can we make Todd's <laughs> um, um, VI control complainer voice a regular guest on the yeah. show? Like, <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, sure. And and this, this happens in every sector, dude, computers, technology, video game. You got it. Like cyberpunk, man. I like the game. I'm a little disappointed it was put out early, but they owned it. They said, yep, we put it out a little too early and we shouldn't have, but we're going to try to make it up to you guys. And we're rolling out updates. They just released patch 1.2. 30 gig, it was like 30 or 40 gigabyte update. Okay, they're working on the game, guys. It takes time, you know? Um, don't play it. Go play something else and come back to it when it's ready. I mean, that, that's life, right? Not everything's going to go the way you want it to go. and mm -hmm. Use that energy for something else, man. Positivity, not negativity. We have enough negativity. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. It's just, you know. Well, I just, think that that's good. That's a, this is exactly the sort of thing I kind of wanted to get into is the bigger issues. I wasn't necessarily yeah. wanting to talk about like. It's a community issue. It's not a company. As, 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 as like a specific topic, but kind of like. Right. What, I think we did a good job there in terms of no. just kind of covering that. That's good. That's good. That, no, but that's like, one, one you know topic. what I mean, Curtis? It's like. Yes, when a company's mm -hmm. at fault, they should be called out for it. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, it's 2021. No more of this hiding behind marketing BS. Like, just come out and say it, and everybody will be cool about it, and we'll move on with our lives. But, you know, when you have these companies that are just, like, acting like it's 1982, where they can control the narrative, you know what I'm saying, about their stuff, Apple's the best at this, you know, controlling the narrative of their products. Um, like, they're marketing geniuses. They, they make you want to get stuff you don't even know you want. <laughs> you know, yeah. I gotta have that. Why? I don't know. I just need it. And um, I don't know because it outperforms another processor when yeah. emulating that process. <laughs> oh, it's because they put a new color on it, or oh my god, yes. look at the little curve on the on the bezel. Um, you know, it's like stupid stuff like that. Anyway, I, yes, I'm a Mac fanboy. Like, but hey, I will oh, say, hundred percent, hundred percent. What what we we were talking before the show is I'm in the process of moving. So I just built my gaming PC and I've been actually using it because I have a 2013 uh, trash can Mac Pro and it's just it's just not cutting it anymore mm -hmm. after I, I upgraded to the Big Sur. So I stopped using it and I'm using my, my PC. So I've been on a PC now for like two or three months. I'm enjoying it, but there's like there's something missing. I just miss the Mac workflow. So I just ordered 
or yeah, I just ordered. It's going to ship like in another week. I don't know why. Uh, the new M1 Mac Minis. So I'm a little scared about getting this machine because it's only 16 gigabytes of RAM. But I was talking to Curtis is I'm going to use my gaming PC because it has 64 gigs of RAM, i9, 10K, you know, blah, 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 whatever, um, as a server, uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro, which I bought like four years ago and I should probably use it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, that's what I'm going to do. And if, if it all else fails, if the Mac Mini doesn't work, I can still use the PC. Because I have Cubase. Well, let's and, um, let's use that yeah. as kind of like a. I mean, I had put this topic up. We don't necessarily have to do it, but let's use that as our as a nice transition into our la- our final topic that we have on the list today, which was uh, yeah, like sample servers and and the hardware that you run on them. Like, what what it, what are you going to use that that PC to do? Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yes. Uh, so right now it's basically built for gaming. I mean, that's what what it is, but. It's a newer process. Like you gotta say, like my my Mac Pro, dude, that's from 2013. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it it it's 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 over. Like so, I'm training it in for to recycle it through Apple to you know get money to get the new machine. I'm thinking like, okay, here's here's a question, Chris. Since you've you've been doing this for for ages and you run an iMac, right? Just a regular iMac or the iMac yeah, Pro? Yeah, just standard iMac, 5K iMac. Yeah. How how much RAM do you have in that one? 32. Okay, you have 32. So um, that's where I'm worried. But like when you're running Vienna and you're running, let's say, Logic, does it use up a lot of RAM? Like when you put tracks for Vienna, I mean, does that take up memory? It just depends um, on what you're doing. Like um, yeah. the DAW, uh, obviously, if you throw on a ton of plugins inside yeah. the main DAW, you're going to stress the system more. But I mean, largely, I find that I don't use. 32 gigs of RAM most of the time um, I, when I adjust just the DAW. That's why I do the like Vienna thing. It allows me to isolate, you know, yeah. things into into machines that I can make sure that everything is provisioned correctly. Um, this 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 is a this is like I think the second generation 5K iMac. It's it's getting a little long in the tooth. It's it's I know they're refreshing the iMac soon. So um, wait when they do the new chip. So yeah, I'm not gonna do one now, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's mostly a uh, it's just a it's a fairly unimpressive machine. Um, it's it's nothing nothing special. But it gets the job done because because your PC is running the hard. Well, like and that's why the- I do this, right? Like that's yeah. why I do the Vienna thing. It's like I can work on. So Apple obviously charges a premium, right, for hardware. Yes. You, you're gonna yes. pay more for the same. Oh like, God, yes, do they? Right, ever. of course, right? Like that's 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 the Apple. That's the trade off, right? That's what Apple is. Yep. Um, and but so you get the a product that, that lasts you ten exactly. freaking years. <laughs> yeah, ten years. Yeah, and 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 I and and that's why I use Vienna because it allows me to buy cheap PC hardware. Like what I ended up doing was just doing what what uh, Todd Holkenberg, Tom Holkenberg does is yeah. uh, I just buy old servers off eBay um, because you can get amazing high end servers for like under a thousand dollars. On eBay, and yeah, they're loud, but I put them in my basement. My I'm fortunate that I live in a in a building that's networked, right? So I just put them down in the in the utility room downstairs, so I never hear them. Um, occasionally, I walk by there and just hear the. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it, it it works out because it allows you to sort of maximize your dollar per like say RAM gigabyte, uh, and and that's kind of why I put this topic on here. Is I just bought um a uh, old Dell R720, I want to say, something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I did not spend, for, for what you would buy to get a machine with dual Xeons and uh, 256 gigabytes of RAM, uh, you know, it was like a third of what that should cost because it's old, right? It's like some yeah. company doesn't, you know, upgrade and doesn't need anymore. So you can just go on eBay and buy these things. Um, and I'm going to start do you know putting all my sample servers on that machine and in virtualization, <laughs> um, just just run several different servers on there, and it's just a really cool way. Now it comes with downsides, right? Like like I said, it's they're loud, they're incredibly loud. Um, so you have to be able to put them somewhere else, um, not in the room where you're going to compose and stuff. Um, but you know this is honestly overkill. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm probably not going to end up using all of that stuff because what Todd's running like this like 64 gig of RAM and like a PC is probably more than you'll ever use. And Chris still doesn't do the Vienna thing. He still runs it just on a regular thing. Yeah. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like I have, I will say my template is really thin. Um, 
I'm just using Spitfire for my main stuff and some Cine samples and Berlin Woodwinds. And obviously, you know, uh, Omnisphere. And I don't even know what the track count is because I'm going to have to redo my template again if I go to the Mac on Logic again or if I'm going to run a Cubase. That's the, that's the dilemma for me. I love both. I love Cubase and I love Logic. Um, certain things about each DAW. And, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, so I don't think I'm going to use 64 gigs. I mean, I really don't know. And if I use Cubase, I could disable tracks. And I know you, Curtis, like you don't have the tracks loaded until you use them in Vienna, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. So similar concept. Well, um, it's because I always like to over-provision hardware. Like yeah. the more headroom you have of unused RAM and unused CPU cycles, the like better things perform. So I try to keep that that buffer as maximized as possible. So but um so Chris, what do you like what like what are the specs on your just your machine? Like this is this is a great thing. Like yeah. like he, 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 let's all hear about how silly I am for owning this much, <laughs> this much stupidity. No, well, no, you're not silly at all. Cause I have, I have an iMac, but, um, it is, I don't even know how old it is. I can, I can see 2017. Um, I have 64 gigabytes of Ram on it. So it, it okay. really crashes, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't use any VE pro stuff. Um, I, I really just use a contact on one computer and I just load my samples into yeah. my external drive. Yeah. And, that's that's it. That's how I've been. I mean, my old 2013 Mac Pro. That's how I did it. 15. <laughs> to tell you how old my machine is. Yeah, okay, but see, like you're, but you're, you're just running the DAW. I mean, like yeah. the the PC is yeah. doing all the heavy lifting, which is the beauty of it. But then also you you come with other problems, like the PC oh, yeah. starts acting up, or PC and there is a little lag. Up, it doesn't yeah. work. Like an IP address right. changes, and all of a sudden Vienna's like yelling at you and right. not loading samples. And yeah, I mean, it does come with downsides. And that's why the approach, the, another reason why I liked Cubase is because disabled tracks, which Logic kind of imp, imp, implemented that feature a while ago, is like, dude, I can have a you know a 6,000 track template and only use the tracks that I need. And they're there, ready to go. All I have to do is hit my command D, it loads up, and we're, we're composing. And I know Trevor Morris, the composer that did Vikings and stuff, um, I was watching because he does YouTube videos now and he did that approach because he used to have all the slaves and everything. And um, now he's just too, well, he's got a new Mac Pro, the new Mac Pros. Yeah. And let's talk about price per dollar here. <laughs> so, yeah. But I don't you like, want two terabytes yeah. of RAM? Oh, Todd? So the, this, the standalone Mac Pro is five, nine, six thousand dollars, dude. I built my gaming machine for half that cost and I'm running pretty much the same. Kind of. Obviously, it's not a Xeon, but you know what I mean. ECC like, RAM. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, dude, I, yeah, no. thousand. If you spec out a Mac Pro, dude, and then you get their Apple Display, dude, you're oh, talking yeah. fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Don't forget the thousand dollar monitor stand. Oh yes, the thousand. Dude, you're looking at twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> I could buy a I'm car hoping that the new iMac uh, is attached to the thousand dollar stand because yes. I feel like I feel like that doesn't have enough uses. Oh. We didn't mention they did they disabled or they discontinued the iMac Pro. Yeah, well, that was always a stopgap. I feel like. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, why make an iMac Pro? I get it because they're trying to get that market that don't want the Mac Pro that used to get Mac Pros. Hey, get an iMac Pro, but I don't want that. Like, I want a standalone machine. Like, when they get the Mac, if they can make the Mac Mini as powerful as like a Mac Pro in that form factor, which they probably will with these new chips that they're developing. Dude, it's game over for me. Like, I just want this little set top box. And that's yeah. what I loved about the trash can Mac Pro. Like, it takes up no space. But yes, it sucks for peripherals and expandability. Like, it's it's basically the Mac dongle machine. I mean, like, oh my God. How many freaking dongles do you have, you know, flying out of your Mac, which sucks. I mean, that's another thing. The Mac Mini. My favorite are when you see uh, like high end composers and like uh, studios and stuff. They'll take that trash can Mac Pro and they put it in like a wine rack yeah. so they can rack it up. I think it's always <laughs> so funny. Like it's just on its cool. side in this like rack mount. <laughs> it's so funny. No, but it's cool though. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like the form factor was amazing, but yes, for expandability purposes, that Mac Pro just isn't going to cut it for like video editors and you know what I'm saying. Like those type of people, I get it. Um, but like, I want the new Mac Pro. God, yes, I do. It's an amazing, beautiful machine. I just can't justify that cost, dude. No way. Like, 
seriously, six thousand dollars for a computer. <laughs> I mean, I would go take that six thousand dollars and invest it in a good stock, and you'll make your money back even more. Not GameStop. Stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> a real legit company. <sighs> you know. Anyway. So yeah, cool, I mean. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I'm so I'm excited about the Mac Mini. And all, I didn't mention. I didn't tell you guys. Um, I just got a new stand sit desk from Uplift. So I guess nice. that should be my pick of the week on top of the other one. So yeah, yes, I'm trying to stole the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> For, you know, yes, I did. Um, but I I did legit buy it and I um, love it. And so anyway, so yeah, so right now I got my PC on it and it's just like clutter, dude. And I'm one of those people like I can't do clutter like on my workspace. And I have a mechanical keyboard for my gaming computer and it's like trying to work on it all day and hearing <laughs> I'm like, I just can't do it. So that's why I'm, I'm going with the Mac. So that's why I said I'm trading in my old Mac pro. I didn't want to, cause I like it, the trash can one, but it's just, it's dated. And so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll ha- I'm supposed to get it next week. Um, so hopefully by next podcast, I can give a little update on so I, it. So I changed this segment to hardware corner. So maybe we can make this like a recurring, uh, as the last segment before picks, uh, hardware. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, it's good to talk, talk about hardware. what we have because a lot of people are interested in gear. Like I'm trying to minimalize dude. And the only problem I'm going to run into is my 88 keyboard. Like I have it on a stand off to the side of the desk, but I'm hoping to get it on the desk, but I might just leave it off the desk. Cause I like my desk, like. You know what I mean? Clean, like minimalistic. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with the uplift. I got it. It's um, 80 inches long and 30 inches depth, which is perfect. Um, it's almost too big, actually. But for what I got on it right now, it works. But when I minimize it to the Mac, because basically when I get the Mac and this becomes my Mac desk, it's basically a Mac mini, a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And then my um, and also another reason is because I bought the Universal Audio, um, the Thunderbolt. Uh, what is it called? Uh, you know those the Universal Audio. Yeah, the ones everybody uses that yes. I don't. I, I can't inactive. use it on my PC. It pisses me off. It doesn't oh, work. Oh really? <laughs> I have Thunderbolt. I have Thunderbolt. I got Thunderbolt Four. Will not work because that's it's hilarious. meant for. It just doesn't work, and it. Because you need the USB one to work on Windows. Welcome to the audio world. But welcome to Mac. We are not just, we don't just use Macs. We're actively hostile to PCs. (laughs) But anyway, I'm just saying like, because I was, oh, cool, I'll get Thunderbolt. And all this, it'll work. It doesn't freaking work. So, and I, and I love that interface, dude. It's so simple. It's got one knob and the converters are amazing. Because right now I'm using my old Steinberg uh, UR44, which I'm, I'm sure it doesn't really make a difference because I've, you know, I'm using an SM. You know, I don't think this makes a difference. Yeah, I, I really don't. Do you, Chris? Do you find that interfaces make any difference in your life as a composer at all? Well, I mean, I, I, I literally just use my uh, interface to connect my microphone to my computer. Right. And, right. Because it's, uh, it's, it's just yeah. a glorified XLR dongle. For right. You. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 But the form factor of the universal audio, it's nice, it's clean, it's simple. Oh, sure. It, I'm not saying you yeah. shouldn't buy, buy, buy things. No, I'm just saying, like, I, just, I miss I, having it. I see I have so this... many people online talking about how the interface matters, and I'm like, eh, does it, though? <laughs> like, five to ten matter. years ago, it did, because the converters weren't yeah. really good. Yeah. But now I just use, so good. like, the internal audio on my my Mac, and people used to always be like, that's why it's going to give you pops <laughs> and clicks. And I was like, it's funny because it doesn't. Right. Um, yeah, but we're at a point now where, like, you know, stuff is so good. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like it doesn't really matter anymore. I yeah, mean, 10 it years. It matters if you're going to hook it up to a $100,000 monitor, you know, 7.1 monitor yeah. thing where you're going to hear, you different. know. Yeah. You know. But, yeah, I mean, converters, I mean, I guess if you're doing all that stuff. But what we do is all inside the computer. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, this is the only time it matters when we're doing a podcast. And All right. Cool. Should we go on to picks? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, that's I'm really excited for that because it's gonna leave because I have the I'm big. Lo- I'm, a, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. <laughs> I bet you are. All right, who wants to go? You want me to go first? I'll sure. Go first. That's I'm the you first. Can, you can steal my pick first. Well, I'll start. With, I'll start with my. Desk. <laughs> I, I want all these comments about you stealing my pick to make it into the edit of the show. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it be better. I'll save it for my second. But anyway, no. I have two picks. Okay, I'll start the first one. So the first one is Spitfire Original Firewood Piano. Yes, I stole it from Curtis. Not really, but yes, I did. Because um, he had it on the on the 
on the list. And I was like, oh, yes, that's cool. But what I should have did was my uplift desk. Um, it's a little pricey. It's kind of like it falls in with the Apple thing. You know, you can get there's ones by autonomous um, standing desk, which is a little bit cheaper. The only reason I went with the uplift desk is the size. Because autonomous doesn't make an 80, you know, length 80 by 30. I think they make like a 70, which mm. in retrospect, I probably would have been okay with the 70, but I just like the look of uplift and I like, you know, everything about it. I mean, when you're a Mac person, you, you get these tastes, you know, you want clean and anyway, right. I'm not defending it, but you know what I mean? If you're a Mac guy, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's my other pick. And, um, so far loving it and the ability it, it's it, it sounds stupid but like the ability to stand during the day and work it's it's so cool like yeah it sounds really cool it's really cool like it your back and like you just feel different like your, your back feels a little bit better and you don't get as tired and stuff so i like i normally in the morning for like an hour i'll stand and work and then in the afternoon i try to do an hour right now and let me tell you standing while working your legs do get tired <laughs> like so it's you have to build up to it but um anyway to, to they're not sponsoring us or anything i just i love it i just got it but the spitfire if they piano, want to i would gladly take oh if they want just, to sponsor us it out hop, hop on we'll we'll definitely i'll talk it up every day um but no i really do love it um anyway but the spitfire firewoods piano i found i just got it i think a week ago and it's the first library i literally bought i don't know i can't remember the last library i bought i don't buy libraries anymore i just try to use what i have unless there's something that like like this one, it's 30 bucks. Hello. <laughs> and what I found, it works really well with Oliver Arnold's felt piano. Like the two just really glue together. And there's settings within the firewood piano. There's a uh, like a normal type of piano. Kind of sounds like, um, what would you call it? Like kind of like a honky, like it has that like honky tonk kind of piano vibe. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like the. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know. Um... I don't know what you would call it's, that. It's got a lot of character, I would yes. say. It's like it's like one of those like that crappy spinet, you know, that like is in like your grandma's house. But yes. like imagine that it was tuned and it was in it hat and it was recorded like with the mic like m- inches from the soundboard. Um I'll talk more about it when I get to yeah. my pick, but but yes. yeah, it's kind of got that that more rough character. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's really I would, good. I would hesitate to say honky tonk. I know why you're saying honky tonk. You know what I mean? That but sound. People that, think of that. Yeah, that really, really like all three strings are on a different note sort of sound. Yeah. <laughs> for honky tonk. But that's the closest I could compare it to. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm familiar with. But yeah, I know it's not it's not honky tonk. Like it's just got that vibe, I guess you want to yeah, say. I, yeah. Um, but they have pa- like a there's different um, things they have in it. You know, they have a felt and then they have a pad that goes with it, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so that those are my two picks. You want to go, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go next. I've just got to head out in a couple minutes. But, um, yep. yeah, for me, I, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Realitone Sunset Strings. It's kind of a really cool, slightly niche string library, but um, it, it basically specializes in textural writing, and the mod wheel is mapped to two different layers. So the bottom of the mod wheel is, like, layer A. The top is layer B, and you can select different articulations for that, so you can cross-fade between different string articulations. Um, to create some really nice textures in them and I've been using them on a couple of tracks and uh, it sounds awesome I think it was recorded at a scoring stage in LA or something so um, yeah it sounds awesome and um, it's it's not like a workhorse string library like maybe CSS or something but it it's definitely a really nice uh, compliment so that's my pick Cool. I've never heard of that company before yeah yeah he, he, he well Mike at Realitone owns VI control so oh does he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Let's get that guy on. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we could. Yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just say. <laughs> yeah, we need to get another uh, composer on. Absolutely. Let's think of some. All right, Curtis. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, my pick is also the Spitfire Originals Firewood Piano. Um, yeah, like Todd was saying, it's just got this very it. it I like pianos with character. Um, I like pianos that have bring something unique to the table. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with more neutral pianos. You know, we talk a lot about how, like, say, Cine Piano has this, like, beautiful, just perfectly neutral sound. It's amazing how they were able to take this piano and get this this sound that just works with everything. Um, mm-hmm. But I personally, when I'm looking for piano samples specifically, I'm looking for something that had that brings something 
that brings a voice and a unique sort of perspective, I guess, to the to the table. And this is really got a really strong, unique flavor and character. It's it's as I was saying, it's I think it's uh, an upright is what they sampled. Um, it's from one of the members of the band, I think the Lumineers, um, who are from oh, Colorado, yeah. by the way, just up the road in Denver there. Um, and uh, this is just a piano that they've used on albums um, that the, one of the band members had. Uh, and I just think it just has this just really lovely authentic, authenticity to the sound. It's it's very um, – what's the word I'm searching for here? It's kind of got like a Western feel almost. I think that's why we were sort of using the word, throwing the word honky tonk around a little. It's kind of feels, it feels like, it feels like a, like a warm fire, like a Western, something you would hear in the old West, a a saloon or something. Yeah. But like tuned, you know, like you tuned one of those pianos so that it was actually the right pitch. It kind of has that feel. It's, it's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful, um, instrument they've got um some really cool controls you can control the the hammer sound like how much hammer sound is in there you can control how much pedal sound is in there which really kind of goes to that more sort of um folksy sound i guess yeah um, once you said the i didn't know it was the lumineers guys so like once you said that like i get it yeah it's like yeah, yeah. right with their vibe yeah and it's really cheap i mean what is it cost? 30 bucks dude. yeah it's 30 like, bucks. yeah it's you so can't. cheap yeah um and i i've been using it on I, every time i need a piano i've just been kind of gravitating toward it recently just because it just gives you so much to to sort of play with in terms of um, the sound it also has like a synth layer i think where they've yep, done yep. Some warping of the of the um of the original patches to kind of give you like a sim more synthy sound which is cool which is also in the o- olifer arnold's toolkit yep, yep. they have the same Dude. idea so if you if you're familiar with that this is very similar it's not quite as um complex like it's just right. one knob in the spitfire uh way there's just like one knob that does this instead of having like actual control over it which for some people is a downside for me i don't care if i want control i'll go buy one of the ones with control um right. so it's the apple approach i'm telling you dude spitfire takes the apple approach on everything they do, they really Marketing, do yeah they, they really they want do. that like really um direct it just works you don't need to fiddle with things um you know like i love what you know the perfect example of this is on their contact uh, libraries for sso they just have the close far slider for the Mm -hmm. mics so that you're not in there like you know moving the balcony mic up and the tree mic down which which can be annoying right because you know you know sometimes you do want that but also sometimes i just want to sound farther away so i just move one slider and I'm done. Um, and then I can go back to say, I don't know, putting notes down. Um, so anyway, I Spitfire originals for the price. It's, it's hard to beat. You can't beat it, man. Yeah. If you need a piano, like if you're stuck with a contact piano that you have, like whatever those, you know, the one, the the giant, which they're good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying you wanted something new to your arsenal, dude, for 30 bucks. You can't beat it, man. I'm, I'm so glad they're doing these like series like they're doing yeah, these $30. Yeah, all of them have been really great. good. I have the I have the symbol in as well and it's also very good. Um I think they just did another piano, the MRS or Mrs. Mills piano, this one from oh, Abbey Road. I got to grab that one. Yeah, cool. it's 30 bucks too. I just saw it. I think uh they just released it. But dude, so maybe they'll Spitfire. just have like hundreds of these so I'll end up giving them yes. the same amount of money. Dude, Spitfire. Yeah. Do all your damn libraries with your engine. Come on. Please. I'm serious. It's like okay, you have all these cool instruments and then you're you know like your strings and you know the go-to orchestras they're still in contact it's like give me the option because they did it with olafur arnold's remember they gave you the option to to change it because now you can put olafur arnold's uh the what what the one the one of you know with the piano in it like you can do a contact version um Mm -hmm. they just did that it's like well, well give us an option for these as well well, you know, they've you know, said they're not going to do that. So I don't yeah. think they're going to I don't That's, think they're going to move any of those contact libraries and they're going to still release contact libraries. So you know what I'm saying it's like, dude, if you're going to do it, just I mean, look, all Todd, I am all in on the Spitfire player. I think the Spitfire player is yes. great. Um, a lot of people hate it, um, which I think is hilarious. Um, but OK cool it's too um, simple, but it's like that's I, I just want something that freaking works i want right, to write I just, music yeah i don't want to yeah. program a hundred percent a hundred percent well and their recent yeah. um the drama toolkit i think was in contact too um which also i was sort of disappointed with um because yeah. it's like come on 
like, but, but, like it's it's going to that thing, dude. It it's so easy now to write with these libraries because they're so good. Go back ten years ago, dude. You had to build your own room. You don't need to worry about that. Like Spitfire wants you to focus on writing music, not being a damn programmer. Yeah. Like I don't want to mess with this stuff. I just want to pull up a thing. It sounds great. It's inspiration. Bam. I'm writing music. Yeah. That's absolutely. what you're supposed to be doing. 100%. At the end of the day, write music. I don't want to go under the hood and uh it's like, dude, this is that this just doesn't I do it. I get that me. there are people who are, yeah. who have a different approach, but also I don't know. Every time I see someone talk about like, I want to be able to, you know, tweak everything, right? Like I want to be able to go in and actually edit the curves on the samples, the actual samples. Pull up a freaking EQ and do it. Jesus well, Christ. I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> like, do you really work at like such a high level that that's useful to you? Because the only time that's ever been useful to me is like when I'm working with like p- super high end professional mixers and masters, right? They want... Yeah you know, really, really tweaky stuff. And that's fine because that's their job. Like that's their whole career. That's, that's, they're trying to make something unique and different. But if you're just a, like a bedroom composer, like, yeah. or a basement composer like us, right? Like we've all been there. Um, yeah. That's not you. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, it's never made sense to me, but. Yeah, if you're under a deadline, you don't have time to go in there and, you know, mess with right. this stuff. It's like, right. you got to pump exactly. the track out and get it out the damn door. Yeah. And, get it out you know. the door first and then worry about all the 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 nitpicky stuff later. stuff later yeah anyway I, that's just a little thing of mine because like i'm real like you i'm really love i didn't like it at first but now like it's grown on me the player and i love it because it's clean it's nice it's simple to use and i'm focusing on writing music yeah Not- and it's and it's and it's really gotten to the point now for me where it's very stable i mean i use bbs as bbcso on almost every track and I rarely have problems with the Spitfire player. It loads a little slow, I would yeah. say. But once it's, it's like loaded, it's nice. Yeah, and once it's, it's like loaded, it's that way where it loads, and when it's loaded, it's done, and it doesn't generally like pop and click or have weird. Yeah. Like here's the thing that Contact does that just drives me up the wall: hung notes. Every yeah. Contact yes. library I own hangs <laughs> at some point, and I yes, I am on the latest version of contact and the libraries i have been on contact for years this has always been a problem and it's still a problem and i never have this problem with any other sampler and it yep. drives me insane i know i, I and I people talk opinion. about contact like it is the second coming of samplers and i think contact <laughs> is great but it has serious problems guys serious problems mm-hmm. and you yeah anyway this is my they usual rant. Do. i think i do this once a I show know. But no, I'm just saying, like for Spitfire, like I'm saying, for them as a company, it makes sense to go all in on their player. Well, like, I think they should. I think they should. Yeah. I don't know like, if the, that might be prohibitively difficult to like reprogram all these old libraries onto it, but I, I get it. I, I would at least well, like to see all future libraries on Spitfire. Or just player. like convert them and still host them on contact. And then going forward, you know, you can still get a contact version. I mean, that might be a lot of programming, but I'm just saying, like, and then slowly move over. Because you made an option on a few of libraries, so why can't you do it with your main core libraries? Like your yeah. freaking bread and butter. Um, you know, like I don't – that makes no sense to me. Like why they don't have their bread and butter libraries on their own player. <laughs> Maybe they'll get there one day, but I, I understand because they're going to get heat for it. And they're, <laughs> It's like, dude, yeah, just whatever. I like it. I, like I said, it was Eric Whitaker. That was the first one I bought in their engine, I think. And at first I was like, what? But once I dove in and started understanding it, I'm like, oh, I like it. It's simple. <laughs> I like simple. Let's not make this complicated, people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're, just, we're, we're only writing music here. We're not, we're not changing the world. I guess you can. But um, anyway. All right. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. <laughs> Sounds good. We, we just need a section for the, a soapbox. We'll call Ranting. it the soapbox. Yeah, yeah, we have the soapbox section. Yeah, so Reed, you just kind of go off and Chris is just kind of like, Hey guys, yep. <laughs> and now, <laughs> Curtis complains about contact and its adherence <laughs> and its zealots for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, anyway, we looks like we're we're at about 100 or 100, Jesus, an hour and 20. So there you go, guys. We got yeah, we got a or, longer episode. Or Chris and, had to had to run, so because yeah. uh, we probably ran into a lesson. <laughs> so anyway, yes. uh, we'll see you all next week. It's been awesome. Yeah. Or next month. Next Whatever month, maybe there's some talk that we're talking about. Maybe live streaming. Yes. Um, that's that's our ultimate goal is to get this to a live stream with interactive audience because we think that would make more sense. 
Um, so we're talking about it, trying to find out the schedules. It'll probably be on like a weekend, probably a Sunday. We'll see. That's not in stone. We're just, we just, we're talking. This is what um, we're talking. Yeah. But it would be really cool if we could do that because we want to incorporate our community. Like that would just make the show a lot better, <laughs> you know, because we could talk about relevant things that people want to hear. And at this point, we've been doing this for three years. We've covered every subject pretty much under the sun, but to hear you know, other people will be great. So anyway, we're going to talk about that. So maybe next episode will be, the, but we should say the audio version will still be available. We'll try to play it up in the Discord if we're going to go live. Yeah. Get the audience. So oh, if, the if you don't know about the Discord, hop in the Discord. Yeah, we need to be a little more interactive in there. I do. I've been kind of away from oh, it. Oh, me too. I, 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 I'm but It's terrible. okay. It's there. I, I see people flying in all the time and people are, it, it's kind of doing its thing now. We're like, I want it to be where it's, People can do their thing. They don't need us to do it, but we need to facilitate it a little bit more. And plus, like I said, yeah, when we're doing the live stream, people can be in the Discord too, yeah. um, you know, and ask questions, and that'd be really cool. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks again for everybody that's been around with us for three years. We really appreciate it. Um, I know we talk about Patreon. Well, we'll get to it someday if there's a need for it. I put it out there a few times, and nobody really has responded. So I guess we're not changing people's lives where they feel like throwing money down i could be wrong that's why live stream would be a lot better because you could donate donate through you know while the show's going on right right makes way more sense and we don't have to do a patreon we could um but i think that for us that would be a lot a lot cooler and we just don't want to edit anymore oh god now curtis knows what i go through every time i do an episode <laughs> i know i hate editing i hate audio editing i'm terrible at it i'm it's it's like pulling teeth it took me like three hours to, to yeah. put the last episode together i was like ah uh... try doing an hour <laughs> yeah. yeah so anyway and I, and I have to do a video version which i just take the audio and slap a graphic on because yeah cares. but yeah so anyway thanks everybody you know where to find us our links are down below um if you want to follow us up anywhere and yeah like curtis said please join our and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye.